Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome back! This is Advanced Map Making Tutorials, my name is Sliced Lime and we are going to crack on with our little map system here. Before we get to the main point of today's tutorial, which is to set up teams, how to let players select their own teams, we're going to do one more thing in the never-ending quest to foolproofing a lobby. Let me do game mode zero, just to get over to my lobby here. And I'll, let me show you something. Um, let's grab ourselves an item frame and something to put in it. And uh, we can just put that there and put the zombie head there. Now, if I switch into game mode zero, which immediately puts me into adventure mode, because if you recall from last time, we foolproofed this thing, you should not be able to break out of it or break it. Well, look at this. No. So, there's yet another thing that I can do as a player here. So, if you do use... Oh, and they disappeared out of my inventory because, of course, we clear inventories. If you do use item frames as decorations or as control, they are very useful item frames, especially if you use them with something like the Map It filter or something similar in MC Edit. Then you can use it both for decoration and for informative purposes. Like in Entrapment, if you've seen that lobby, of course, it has both my mother's paintings in it as decorations and also the preview of the arena that you're about to play as information about the map. And all of those are item frames. Now, there's two things you need to do if you want to have item frames in this area. Let me put those back up. Now, the very first thing that we're going to do is you're going to want to do entity data at E type equals item frame, because remember item frames are entities, and that's why we can interact with them in a different way than we can with blocks. And we can set this one to invulnerable, and if I just do game with zero, see I can no longer destroy this item frame. So now we have fixed that one problem, and I can't take this thing out, but sadly I can still turn it. So let's run this command again, we get the output of the entity data, and let's take a look at it. As you can see, we have an item rotation tag here, and that's changed from before. Now it's one, it used to be zero. So if we run this again with item rotation zero, then you will see that we will turn this back. So, if we go back to game mode creative and teleport ourselves over to our command blocks over here, uh, then we can add on a block to this lobby clock. And what that does is entity data item frames to be invulnerable and to have this item rotation. Now, if you're going to be using item frames in your actual game that you do want people to be able to break or turn, then you're going to have to qualify this more by either including a box. You could do x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0, and r equals 20 or something. So that gives you a radius around 000, which is spawn, if you recall. Or if you don't want to do that, you could name them or whatever. I think I named them in Entrapment, actually. Now, if we have this running every single tick, then if I go back to game mode zero, then you'll hear here that we have a bit of an issue with this command. This, I believe, was not a problem in 1.8. You could do this without a problem because there is no sound associated with doing these things to an item frame. But yeah, let's go back to our command blocks and take another look at that. Now, in order to fix this, we're going to need a few commands rather than just one. So let's copy this command. We're going to reuse that, but let's place that a couple of blocks away. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to detect if this thing has been disturbed and then put it back rather than just always putting it back. And the way we can do that is using scoreboards. In 1.9, we have the tagging that's going to help. So we do scoreboard players tag at a type equals item frame. And let's just add the tag turned to all of them. Now, every tick, they're all going to get the tag turned. Now we're going to do scoreboard players tag at e type equals item frame remove turned. And this one we're going to put a data tag condition on and that it's going to be item rotation. And that is a byte. And if it is zero, then we're going to remove the turned tag. 
So that means that we put the turn tag to all of the item frames in this block and then we removed it from those that weren't turned. So at this point, every single one of them is turned. Now let's place this one properly in that direction again. And we can now add one more condition to this and that is tag equals turned. Okay, game mode zero. Now we're back here. It's silent again, which is nice. But if I turn it, we get a single little click and it's now impossible for me to turn it and I can't break it. So our foolproofing has now taken one more step towards becoming complete. I'm sure there are more things that can happen here <laughs> which can ruin this. For now though, we're going to get rid of this because we don't need it. What we're going to be spending the rest of this episode on is how to set up teams. So first of all, scoreboard teams add and I like to use the color names as the primary names of the teams and the teams command are the ones I don't use so often so let's take a look at the syntax scoreboard teams add name and display name so red and red for instance and then we can do scoreboard teams option uh, red color red and let's do another one so blue 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 color blue for instance now i can do scoreboard teams join red and if i say hi you'll see my name is in red i have joined the red team let's leave it that for now uh there we go so now there are a number of ways you could do this you could have clickable signs you can have buttons you can have any other type of control but the one thing that i like doing because it's so visually obvious, is to just have blocks of different colors on different sides of this lobby, and walking into the side with that color will join that team. It is a very obvious and visual representation of how a map works, and if you complement that with some form of effect or something, unless you've probably seen an entrapment, then it becomes really obvious. We'll do that. We'll start with two teams. You can do this with however many you want, the, as long as your lobby is big enough. So we're going to create a marker here. And that marker is going to be for a cloud of effects. And ideally, that cloud of effects would actually be an area effect cloud. The problem right now is it seems that most of the particle types ignore the coloring. So we can only choose from one color, which isn't all that fun. So let's instead summon an armor stand. It's going to be on this very block, except it's going to be one up. And we're going to include some data. First of all, a custom name. And it's going to be red team. And then we're going to make it in vulnerable marker and invisible. That makes absolutely no difference. But let's head on over to this side and we're going to do the very same thing. But instead of minus four, we get four here, and it's going to be called blue team. All right, we have two armor stands here. You can't see them, but if I go over to game mode spectator, you will see that they are in fact there, standing in the middle of those blocks. Now let's go use them. So we go back to our blocks here, fall off the edge. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks. So I'm going to try to keep this within a chunk, just snake it back and forth like this. Uh, this is block number 10. And it's going to be execute at E. Type equals armor stand, name equals red team. Now, the reason I include the type equals armor stand is that otherwise, however unlikely it's possible that a player joins your game who is actually called red team and if you don't include the armor stand or some other qualifier here that could cause any number of problems so we always do that so we're just going to run a particle command let's run a red dust for instance and it's going to be wherever this armor stand is but let's lift it one into the air and then let's just put one 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 for the size let's put a speed of zero and the count of one. And then just push force there because, well, this is our lobby, we want the players to see it. So let's go game mode zero. 
Now let's find out how that looks. So now we have a bit of a particle clouds surrounding this little area. Now what we could do, of course, is we could increase the density of that or whatever we like. So if we want a really dense one, we could put maybe four here. We'll go back and have a look. And now there's red particles all over here. Fairly obvious that this is kind of the red side now. You can experiment with these however much you like, of course. And then we're of course going to do exactly the same thing for the blue team. So let's just copy that, paste it in here, switch this to blue team, and then switch out the particle to something bluish, which for instance could be the magic crit particle. And let's just uh, quickly head on over here and take a look. So now we have two different sides with two different particles, and they kind of clearly show that there's something different going on there. The problem is there isn't anything different going on here. Nothing happens if I go between them. So that is the next order of business. Now, there are a number of complexities to this, but the very, very basic is you want anybody who gets close to that armor stand to join that team. We could simply do that by doing execute at E, type equals armor stand, remember we keep that, name equals red team, and in its position we're going to do a scoreboard teams join a red at A, R equals 2. So everybody within a radius of 2 is going to join the red team. Now this will work. But it's not ideal, and the problem with this is it keeps reapplying, and I don't get any message, and I don't really know what's going on. I, as a player, I can't see that something has happened. But if I say hi, you will see that I am indeed on the red team now. And we can do the same thing for the blue team, and it would do what we want, but it would not tell the players that it is doing what we want. So we're going to have to be a bit more clever with this. First of all, I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it over so we have one space before it happens. So when I step in there, I wanted to show everybody that I have joined the red team. I can do that with a tell raw for at A. Now, tell raws are a chapter in and of itself, but basically, a Telraw is sent to a number of players as a target. It's this selector here, and then it's followed by an NBT list of complexes, and each complex describes a part of the text, and then they're all concatenated after each other. And starting with 1.9, these have to all be fully valid JSON, which is annoying, but we can do selector, and then, for instance, at a r equals 2. That's what we had before, right? So let's try that. And you'll see that it's now spamming my chat. Everything disappeared. If I step in here, it will say my name. But if I step away, it won't. So the problem here is that command is running every single tick and it's spamming the chat. Now, as you see in my chat, it's stopped. And the reason for that is that that chunk way over there unloaded when I teleported over here. If I teleported back, it would start back up. So that doesn't quite work. Now what I can do is to fix this is in two parts. First of all, I want to not select myself if I'm already on the team. We can do that by team selector and putting not red here. So this will make sure that it doesn't say my name repeatedly, but only once, but it is still going to spam blank rows. And to fix that, we're going to have to do something a bit complicated. We're going to nest a few more executes in here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run an execute off of that same selector, but we're going to replace at A with at P. So if there is no player within a radius of two, we don't want to be running this command. And this will kind of seem to maybe work. The problem here is that by running this execute command, we're actually moving the point of execution. And the simple solution to that is to simply run this execute command again. Execute commands here 
work both as a sort of conditional and as a sort of base of operation and as a sort of branching operation. But in this case we're saying base the operation at the red team, check if there is a player around within a radius of two who's not on the red team, and if so, rebase the operation back to the red team armor stand and do this tell raw command. Whew! That was a whole bunch of stuff. And then we run the join command. So, if I do game mode zero, I go over here, and now we see it doesn't spam me anymore, but it also doesn't tell me anything, because I am already on that team. So we do scoreboard teams leave, and then join here, it tells me my name. And then the rest of that is just flavor. We can go and make sure that the message displays something nice. So uh, if we add in another text here, we can do text and has joined team red. Whew. That was a bit of a complicated thing, but the good thing is if we wanted to repeat this for more teams, and all we have to do is replace these things with the appropriate team names. So, team is not blue, then we do the same thing for the armor stand called blue team. And then again, team is not blue, and again, blue team. And then copy the second command into this one, uh, change blue team to join blue. Now if you do game mode zero, so this should be all you need, but I'm going to show you that it isn't. Because there is one very unfortunate effect of this, because you get this very confusing effect of saying sliced lime in blue text has joined team red, and sliced lime in red text has joined team blue. This is super confusing, really want it the opposite way, but the problem is that the message is displayed while I'm still in the old team. Now there are a number of ways of fixing this, and the one I'm going to show you is simply the one that I used in Entrapment. So add two more blocks and move these two commands over. By the way, I've gotten some comments on this. The reason I copy text rather than blocks is because otherwise I have to keep track of what I have on my bar. And it's very easy to put down a block with contents you don't want to put down. So I try to avoid that and I do so by copying the text of the commands rather than the blocks themselves. Now let's move these two over as well. What we're looking to do is to add one block here before each of these run. Then what we're going to do is we're going to do something very similar to this, which is scoreboard teams leave. So anybody who's not on the red team, but who is in the range of the red team armor stand is going to leave their team. Then we're going to send the message and then we're going to join the red team. And then, of course, we're going to do the same thing for Team Blue. We're going to do Team equals not Blue and leave instead of join. Now, if we go to game, oops, now if we go to game mode zero and go over here, we'll see that we have Sliced Lame is joined Team Red and Team Blue in all white text. And that means that you can color it the way you want by editing that tell raw command. If you don't want to edit that by hand, then go on over to minecraftjson.com. It has a Telraw generator, which will make your life immeasurably much easier. You could do this in any number of ways. Of course, instead of making them leave the team, you could tag them first and have them join and then do the Telraw last. But then you would have to reset the tags and it would be more commands. The nice thing about this is, if you, since it uses only scoreboard teams operation, it works on both Minecraft 1.9 and Minecraft 1.8 and you don't have to worry more about it. So that is our setup complete in Minecraft 1.9. Aha! Uh -huh. 
As you can probably tell by this layout, we are now in Minecraft 1.8.9. Most of this is going to be copy and paste, but the very first things aren't going to be. So we're going to do game mode 0 to get us over to our lobby again. Now, as previously, we have a little bit of an issue here. And as you can hear, there's only the sound of my clicking. There's no sound in game, which means we don't have to bother about that. But we still have the same problems with this. So, entity data at e equals item frame invulnerable one. Item rotation zero. It starts at zero, of course not at one. So this is the command that we would like to keep running here. Now if we go back to our clocks, we can do that here. So let's just do entity data type equals item frame and vulnerable one item rotation zero. Drop ourselves back to here. Now we can't kill it and we can't rotate it. Now of course if we would have used the Area effect clouds, this would be radically different, but since we are now using the armor stance, we can just copy and paste all of our commands from 1.9 into 1.8, and things will work just as well in this version. And there we go, that's all of the remaining commands copied in in exactly the same form. Go to game mode zero, now we're back here. And there was just one thing that we need to do for all of this to work, and that's of course. To, to add the teams. So, and there we go, which means that I can now join Team Red and Team Blue. And just to prove a point, let's say hi from the blue team. So, that is that very small differences in actual effect between 1.8 and 1.9, but that's what happens. We have a large number of things that are easier in 1.9 but then also this little extra complexity with there being a sound on item frames. So that, my friends, is that. Next time we're going to start getting into controls using clickable signs and stuff like that. That is a whole other can of worms in and of itself, and we are going to take the lid off of that one next time. So thank you for watching, I hope this made sense to you, and as usual, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments on the video, and of course suggestions for more things that you want to see down the line in this tutorial series are always welcome. This is Slice Lime, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.